In this video, we're talking about two important Flexim elements. The arrival schedule, which is used to create flow items according to a schedule, and labels, which are used to attach information to flow items and objects. So if I look at a very simple generic model like this, if I look at the source, it's generating products in the arrival style, which is the default, which is inter-arrival time, which means the product arrives every X seconds or minutes or whatever, which is defined by this rule here. Right now it's an exponential distribution. This is fine for some situations, but in most manufacturing models, it doesn't represent reality because products don't arrive this way. They'll arrive according to a schedule or a sequence. So these are the, the three different styles of arrival. So let's talk about the schedule now. So when you select arrival schedule, you have the option here to edit a table, which is the table of what will be created through that source. So right now, all that source is creating is one product named product at time zero. So let's say a typical manufacturing environment, I might have, uh, I might start on Monday morning, putting 10 products in production. So at time zero, it's creating exactly 10 products. I have nine here plus one that's already in the processor. And maybe over time, I'm creating more products. So let's say after uh, 10 units of time, 20 seconds. So I'm creating 10 products of each. Let's say here I'm creating a batch of 12 and here I'm creating a batch of eight. And that's it. So at going to look at the runtime here at, at until I reach 10 seconds it's only going to be the first 10 and then when I reach 10 there's another batch of 12 and then when I reach 30 there'll be another batch of eight products so very simple and this can be as long as you want as complex as you want and it can be imported from an excel spreadsheet so this is very useful if you're simulating a real production environment you format the schedule in an Excel sheet with the right columns and the right rows and everything and then you just import it through Excel and you have your schedule here so but let's continue about about that right now if I click on products they're all called product because I didn't specify so whether it's the first batch the second batch or the third batch so let's say I want to give them specific names so this one will be product B, this one will be product R, and this one will be product uh, KOL. And then I rerun. So the first 10 products are will be called product A. So if I was to click on any of these, but then when the second batch arrives, let me just put that here. You see they're called product KOL actually. Yeah, because I'm already at 24 seconds. At, the other so the middle row here is product r so that's a very simple way of making products different now we'll introduce another concept which is called labels an example of a use of a label on a product is to assign some information to the product that you will want to be using later in the simulation but you want to attach to the product so for example the process time if i look at the processor here Process time is the default 10 seconds per product, but maybe I want to have a specific process time for each product type. So what I would do, what I can do, there's actually many ways to do it, but one way to do it is to add a label here, my label one, and I'll call it process time one for let's say processor one. And then I put a, a time here. So let's say this is 8.2. I don't know, maybe this one takes 11.6, and maybe this one is really fast, takes 5.7 seconds. If I reset and run, whenever I, I click on a product, I see that now it, it now has a label attached to it, and the, the label is called process time one, which is what I named it here, and its value is the value I put in here. So that's very powerful, and you can attach labels to everything in Flexim. So for example, a, a processor here, right now doesn't have any labels, but processor could have a label, which is used, you use to store information temporarily or permanently or whatever. You could create a custom counter on the, on the processor, which um, 
kilos processed, for example, and whenever a product exits the processor, you, you add how many kilos were processed at that time and, and you add it to the counter. And at the end of the simulation, you, add, you know how many kilos that processor processed. So it's just a one example, but there, there are, you can put labels on everything and anything in, in Flexim. But very typical example is flow items, which is what I'm doing now and will be continuing. So if I look at how much time the processor is uh, spending doing the product. So what I'll do is I'll just look at the first one here and whenever it gets out, I'll stop, click, click on the processor, go through its statistics and see that the item spent 10 seconds in it. What does it mean is that it means that even though I put the information on a label, it still doesn't mean I'm using it. So all I did here in the arrival schedule by putting a label is basically putting a post-it on a box on a product and saying, when you get to processor one, here's the information you might need, but doesn't mean you're using it. So what you have to do to use that information that's on the label is go to the processor. Let me reset that. You go in the processor and instead of having a process time of 10, I'll do it the easiest way possible. You click on a processor, instead of a process time of 10, you go on the sampler here to sample something in Flexim, and you go sample one of the products, click on it, and then you choose the label that you want. And now the value here, instead of being 10 seconds, it's item.process time one, which is the correct syntax for referencing the label that's on the item. If I rerun now, I'm just going to let one box go through, click, and then I look, and then the box spent 8.2 seconds in the processor because I, I'm using the label value. And if I continue, of course, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work, but by going like this and then stopping, after the, having done all the 30 products, if I click on it, I see that the state time in the processor was a minimum of 5.7, max 12.6, and average 9.29, which corresponds to, to this. Very useful, very powerful. Um, again, it's not the only way to do this. We could do it through global tables. We could do it to other means, but for starters, let's do it this way. And this could be much more powerful than that. So instead of just putting in a value here, what if you wanted the process time to be a statistical distribution? Well, you can here put the parameters of the distribution and then you, you, you use them in the processor. So for example, instead of process time one, let's say I call this average time PT1. And then here I'm going to call standard deviation P T1. So let's say I want to create a normal distribution with these times. So maybe this is one, this is maybe two standard deviations, maybe this is one. And then I go into the, again, in the processor. And instead of just referencing the value, I'm going to be using a, a statistical distribution. Let's say it's a normal distribution, which I know is not a good choice for uh, process times, but just for the example, it's going to do. Okay, so again, I, I purposely run the model a little bit just so I have products in there. So I can just click on them, which makes it much easier to... Uh... So here the mean, I call it average, but it should be mean, but will be this parameter. So I go here, I click, say average. And I want the standard deviation to be what's written on the label called STDV. Whenever I run, I'm just going to do one product again. If I click on this, go to the parameters. So the first product should have been a normal distribution with a, a mean of 8.2 seconds and a standard deviation of 1. And for that particular product, it was 7.27 seconds. So that works. If I can run another one, 
I can see that it was 8.13. One of them was 7.27, the, the other one, so etc. So, so you see my, uh, my example here. So you can have as many labels as you want, and you can have as many lines in, in the schedules as you want. And what's nice is that whenever you, you're looking at your model and you, you just want to see what that is, you just click on a product, you see its name, and you see its labels right there. So very, very useful when, when, when building your model. One uh, little other thing I wanted to say about that is that the same logic applies to a process flow. Let's say you have a process flow in your model. And in the process flow, there's a schedule source. So if I look at the schedule source, very, very similar parameters as the, as the source in the 3D view. So you can define how many arrivals, how many labels, and then you have the columns. So it's, it's almost the same thing. So same, same logic applies, but that's a different subject. Thank you for listening.